Uh, big one tonight here at the Eden Prairie Community Center. We've got uh, Edina and the Eden Prairie Eagles going at it. Uh, last uh, game was played at the Edina Holiday Classic. That's a non-conference game. And uh, Eden Prairie was impressive, 6-2 win there. Edina's on a nice little run. They've been kind of peaking and valleying all year. They've been playing some really good hockey right now. Uh, and it, it should be good. Neil Sheehy in the house. That must mean there's some talent here. Good to see you, buddy. Good to see you. This should be uh, Edina is uh, a different team. And the thing I've noticed with all these teams this year right now is they come from the beginning of the year where it looks showcasey individual hockey-ish. They're really starting to settle in with how the teams want to play. Yeah. Have you noticed that? Yeah. As the year gets, goes on, you know, I think guys get more comfortable playing with each other and everything, and things, you know, things start to settle in a little bit and start fire, getting fired up for the playoffs, which are coming up in February. You know, everybody, ever since I finished high school, every year people say, you know, the talent just isn't the same, is it? The reality is hockey keeps getting better and better, and the players keep getting better and better, and Minnesota still does it better than any other state in the country. And developing hockey players. Can I ask you a question to Minnesota hockey? It's a conversation I had yesterday about players that are kind of bouncing around from program to program. Do do you? I'm saying like if I if I'm a kid and I go to Minnetonka and I I want to go here for history to Eden Prairie because it's a really good department. I can start studying history right away. Do you do you think they should loosen that up and just admit it and let kids go where they want to? Or what do you think about the community-based thing? I know we we grew up with it, and I, yeah, I love it, but it feels like it's just teetering. What are your thoughts yeah, there? Yeah, you know, lots of communities have changed over the years, too. And, yeah. you know, I grew up in International Falls, where up, up north, where we had great tradition, but we just don't have the numbers anymore. And so if a player really wants to play at the highest levels, it's a little harder for him to, to stay in certain communities, okay? Whether it's International yeah. Falls or maybe other other cities or other towns even in the metro area that's you know the programs just aren't as advanced as some of the others like Creton and Edina and you know Lakeville South and Moorhead and a lot of these uh, you know a lot of traditional powerhouses uh, the demographics change and um, you know I, I, I think yeah. people have to be able to do what they want to do and and whatever they feel is right for their individual family um, if they're willing to make the changes and follow the rules, uh, let them do it. Kind of what I'm thinking too, and so uh, it gives it gives the players the opportunity to do what they need to do. And uh, if you want to play next level, you can if you're good enough. And if not, great experience. Maybe play some club hockey, which is great out there as well, or yeah. shut her down and start studying. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Not everybody's meant to be a pro hockey player or a college hockey player. And the biggest thing I say for kids is go out and have fun. And that's why I see these high school games. Kids go out and have fun playing the game. And that's what it's all about anyway. And all, all any parent should ever want for their kid is to have a, a great high school experience. And Absolutely. Something to be memorable. And whether they go on and play or not, you know, that's going to be up to them. It's about what's in here, in the room, right? Absolutely. All right, buddy. Good to see you as right, always. Thanks. You. Take care. So uh, tonight's game, that's Neil. He's an awesome resource in hockey. He's a treasure. He was a stud at International Falls. Um, he also uh, played with Calgary. I believe had a little Hartford, uh, Washington Capital action. He's now a player agent, really well versed in, um, in in hockey. And as an agent, he's got some big name NHL players. He and Paul Osby among their players are really good. But tonight's game, I think, is going to be really interesting. I think Edina is going to bring a little bit more of a physical edge. Uh, I don't think they feel as a group that they did what they wanted to do with that last uh, game. And it, and it showed in that 6-2 loss. So they've been, they, you know, I know, I'm kind of guessing the kids have even might have communicated that to uh, the Eagles, who might be ready. I don't know. I'm not sure. So um, let's grab Chris Kanoff. How about that game you guys had? That was incredible. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was a good, a very good JV game. Yeah, good comeback. Yeah. I, would you score two in 41 seconds? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then you had a couple of chances in overtime. Yeah. They did too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, who says that those kids don't play for their hearts and souls, right? Uh-huh. They really do. They really compete. They mm-hmm. just love to compete. So. I just, when I first saw you, I looked down and saw green, white, and black on the gloves. I had to do this. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. It looks really good on you. Well, thank you. No, yeah. I, I'm having the time of my life, actually. Oh, yeah. I had a great I had a great time at Jefferson. It was a great experience, but 
you know, with the, with Mike coming in there, he's you know trying to do good, good things, thing. good yeah. over there, and we just wish him well. And it was time for him to move, and Kurt and I go way back, and he gave way him. back to Duluth. Okay. Well, it's good to see you, buddy. Great to we'll see, see who buddy. else we run into as well. <laughs> All right, thank you. Yeah, thank Take you. care. Right. Cheers, Chris. Thank you. Well, what, what, what the heck? Well, I you, you, you watch right? No, I'm interviewing you. Oh. <laughs> See, right there, come on. Uh, tonight, Edina, Eden EP, Prairie. Yeah. You're, you're, you're the super fan of super fans for the Hornets? Yeah. Thoughts? I think it'll be close. I think we have a hard time scoring, and EP's tough, and I think it'll be, I think we'll win by a goal, but I think it'll be a really good game. I think we're going to be physical. Yes, agreed. We being the game. Yes. On a given night, you got teams that would have like never been anywhere in a zip code now that are getting it done. You you, you don't you know everybody wants a number one. Everybody wants to go through somebody. You know, I think the sections are narrowing themselves down into the top two or three that you're seeing. Yeah. But those top two or three don't necessarily mean that they couldn't be beat by four, five, or six. Truth. Seriously. Truth. We uh, we're getting ready for the game as we come upstairs to our lofty perch here at the Eden Prairie Community Center. Uh, some of the characters that we run into on a nightly basis, that's the whole point of the show. That's what we're trying to get accomplished. We're going to hook up now with John Conley here as we get our stream ready to go. What do you think for tonight? For tonight's game? Yeah. I think it's a great one. We've got a revenge matchup. We do. We've got a coach that just retired yesterday, effective at the end of the year. So you've got a victory tour lap going on. Multiple, How are the kids going to respond to that? Multiple state championships represented behind both benches. And one announcing an exit. So it's really very likely the last time Lee Smith faces his adversary, Kurt Giles. They get one more, I think, at the end of the year, don't they? Not unless they would meet in the state tournament. Because their original game was the uh, Holiday Classic. And the late conference, I believe, has used that as the lead game oh, they for did. the last few years. I stand corrected. Uh, good call. Good call. I think yeah. this is the end of an era. Uh, it, it's really that bizarre. Giles. That's like 50 years worth of high school hockey coaching as head coaches behind the benches. And Edina's, biggest, Edina's biggest consistent rivalry has been Eden Prairie for the tenure of these two coaches. I believe, what were they, 7 or 8 now or something? I was just going to say... They should be upset and be looking for revenge because of what it looked like going into that game. If you remember, yeah. the Tuesday, whatever, Gold Grand Rapids was a very impressive, I think, 5-1 win. Yep. And the next game was close against Elk River on the scoreboard, but certainly outplayed them. Y yeah, it was closer than the scoreboard. And all indications were that this was an Edina team that might be capable, even though they had a hard schedule, close to running the table. Well, we were saying, I and was that, saying, who's going to beat them, and right? That, and, and actually, Pete, lost 5-7, of seven, and for the two wins, it was only a miraculous third period like that what, bailed them out. Like five goals or whatever against Prior Lake. Prior Lake, yeah. and the other third yep. period was a late comeback against Lakeville South. Yep. So if that's seven games, five losses, 21 periods, 19 of the 21 periods, he died had trouble scoring, and it was Eden Prairie that started him on that downward trend. Yeah, and then now they've... So they went here, and now they're well, they're going back up again. Or so, we, they, or so well, we think, right? Yeah, because like, then they lost they to Wyzetta and didn't score against Wyzetta. So the question is, looks as though against the higher English type teams, is it a problem for the Hornets to score? And that's the if question. You, if and you it, scoreboard watch. Yeah, so the Hornets, they have only had trouble scoring in the games where they've had trouble scoring, if that makes sense. Some yeah, days, yeah, yeah. it's off to the races, and Katie bar the door, and others, it's just a, a malaise, and they can't quite break the funk. The Hornets this year have a weird distribution on the goals against, and we'll talk about that maybe during the game. They've had 0-1 and 2 is very common as far as the give-ups. They've never given up 3, but they've had some. Yeah. When the games have gone against them, They've had four, five, and six against in an otherwise solid defensive team. So you just don't know, and that's what I'm here for. And then over the history of the Hornets, there have not been a lot of four, five, six goal games in any year. That's just not their trait o over the past 10, 15 years. You know? Of course. So it's just different, right? It's it's uh, So what's going to happen? And we know the offensive skill of Eden Prairie. I mean, it, 
That first line of theirs could be as good as any. Yeah, I, Teddy Townsend to me, if he doesn't look draft pick worthy as a 10th grader coming up here, I don't know who is or what is, but... Uh, and then, you know, he's a perfect blend with Andor, and then they've got the speed and strength of Luloff. And then if they decide to swap out Luloff to give balance to the other group with uh, Tyler Johnson and, and his line, I mean, anything can happen there. So, so Pete, I, I look at these two teams when you just pull up the schedules. Unitas, 12-6. and six. Eden Prairie's 11-7. and seven. Very similar schedules. Same. They both play everybody. Yeah. The Edina losses... They have, they have uh, five games where they've given up four, five, or six goals and otherwise do a great job keeping the puck out. So as the goals against go, so does Edina. And obviously, if you're scoring so much, you're not giving up any. So that's really the question when someone says, what do you expect from Edina tonight? I just don't know, and that's what makes it so exciting. Behind the D and go to work. Off the back of that. Feinberg shot, Pitts, and scores! Oh, a seeing eye shot from Bill Feinberg. He's a magic man when it counts. It's three to two Eagles. It started with another bad bounce. We saw a couple earlier this period. That's Tony Schultz. We're tied at one on the power play. Schultz picks up the loose change. There was an initial save made by Karkowski. Up with it. Off the glass. Oh, will that be a pool shot? It, it is. They score! Oh, an empty netter. I mean, guys make millions of dollars to chip like that. The Unbelievable.